Welcome to Bible Explained, the platform where we explore the fascinating stories and teachings of the Bible. The Bible is a source of immense wisdom and guidance for people of all ages and backgrounds, with its powerful narratives of creation, prophets, and the teachings of Jesus and the Apostles. Today, we delve into a topic that has puzzled both scholars and Christians alike for centuries. How did fish survive Noah's flood? This question is significant not only for its scientific curiosity, but also for its theological implications. The story of Noah's flood is one of the most iconic and memorable stories in the Bible, and it continues to captivate readers with its awe-inspiring depiction of God's judgment and mercy. Therefore, let us explore this question and discover what the Bible has to say about the survival of fish during this catastrophic event. The story of Noah's flood is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. According to the book of Genesis, God decided to flood the earth in response to the wickedness and sinfulness of humanity. In Genesis 6-5-7, we read, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. This passage makes it clear that the flood was a response to the extreme wickedness of humanity. God had created humans to be good and to reflect his image, but instead they had turned away from him and become consumed by sin. Their actions had become so evil that God decided to start over with a flood. God instructed Noah to build an ark and to take two of every kind of animal, including fish, onto the ark in order to preserve them from the flood Genesis 6 19 20. In Genesis 6 19 20, God instructs Noah, you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. While the Bible does not specifically mention fish in this passage, it does state that all living creatures were to be brought into the ark. It is reasonable to assume that this would include fish, as they are indeed living creatures. Additionally, in Genesis 7:21-23. It is stated that every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals, and the creatures that move along the ground, and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. This passage confirms that all living creatures were included in the flood and that only those in the ark were saved. Therefore, it can be concluded that fish, along with all other living creatures, were included in the ark in order to preserve them from the flood. Many people wonder how fish could have survived the flood, given that they require water in order to breathe. However, the Bible does not provide a detailed explanation of how this happened. There are a few possible explanations that have been suggested, but ultimately we do not have a definitive answer. One possible explanation is that the flood was not a completely global event, but rather a localized flood that only covered certain parts of the earth. In this scenario, the fish would have been able to survive in the portions of the ocean that were not affected by the flood. Another possible explanation is that God supernaturally sustained the fish during the flood. This is supported by the fact that the Bible describes the flood as a miraculous event that was initiated by God. In Psalm 104 to 14, 15, the psalmist describes how God provides food for all creatures, including fish, and how God is in control of the natural world. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, 
oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. Additionally, some scholars have suggested that the Ark may have contained tanks or containers filled with seawater in order to provide a habitat for the fish during the flood. However, there is no direct evidence to support this theory. While we do not have a clear answer to the question of how fish survived Noah's flood, we can trust that God is in control of the natural world and that he is able to sustain his creatures even in the midst of a catastrophic event like a flood. As it says in Psalm 136 to 56, to him who by understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever, who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. It's also important to note that the Bible does not provide a specific timeline for the duration of the flood or the amount of time that the animals were on the ark. Some scholars suggest that the flood may have lasted for a period of several months, while others believe that it may have been shorter or longer than that. Regardless of the length of the flood, it's clear that God had a plan to preserve his creatures, including the fish. In Genesis 8-1-2, we read that God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. This passage suggests that God was actively involved in the process of ending the flood and restoring the earth to its previous state. It's possible that God supernaturally guided the fish and other marine creatures to safe areas of the ocean where they could thrive once again. It's also worth noting that the story of Noah's flood is not meant to be taken purely as a historical or scientific account, but rather as a theological and moral one. The story is intended to teach important lessons about God's justice, His mercy, and His faithfulness to His promises. In particular, the story highlights the wickedness of humanity and the consequences of sin, as well as the importance of faith and obedience to God. As we read in Genesis 6 to 5, 8, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. The story also emphasizes God's mercy and his desire to save those who are faithful to him. Despite the wickedness of humanity, God chose to spare Noah and his family and to preserve the animals on the ark. As it says in Genesis 8, 20, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures, as I have done, as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. In the end, while the question of how fish survived Noah's flood remains a mystery, the story of the flood itself continues to inspire and challenge people to this day. It reminds us of the power and majesty of God, as well as our own responsibility to live in obedience to His commands. As it says in Proverbs 3 to 5, 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Did you enjoy watching this video? We invite you to explore more clips from Bible Explained. And please remember to subscribe and enable notifications to keep informed of our latest videos. Thank you for watching, and may the living God bless you.